Okay, I had my second mapping session yesterday. What a huge upgrade. My bad ear has become my good ear sooner than I would have ever thought possible. I have a lot to tell you about. Hi, I'm Vince, and in my last video I talked about my desire to get more low frequencies. One strategy was a non-starter, one worked out and is pretty cool, and one kind of blew my mind. More in a second. My appointment yesterday started with a trip to the testing booth for the first time since my implant. What I found out is that I do have some residual hearing in the implanted ear, but it's not much, and at this point it doesn't appear likely that it's going to keep improving. So I left the booth a little bit bummed by that. But word recognition with my implanted ear and with both ears working together has taken a big leap. Then it was on to the mapping adjustments. Based on the results of the booth testing, I got a bit of a boost in electrodes 14 and 15 up in the higher frequencies. And I also got a global boost in level just to keep up with my brain's adaptation, I suppose. Then we got to work reprogramming my Link M hearing aid, softening some of the high mids and making sure that there was plenty of low frequency gain, especially while streaming and using the Roger mic. If you recall from the last video, I was going to ask about lowering the IFR or input frequency range to try to bring down those high pitches I've been hearing, but that was a no-go. The software doesn't grant access to change the IFR. It is what it is, apparently. Oh well. So I do still have voices that are about an octave high in my implant ear. Either we'll work together to uncover other strategies to deal with that later, or my brain will just learn to deal with it. I told you last time about Professor Mike Marzalek's channel gain recipe to get better low frequency perception. My audiologist was totally game to try it out, and it made an immediate difference, smoothing out my perception that I was only getting high frequencies from my implant. I asked her to apply that to a custom music program in one of the memory slots and as the default setting in my streaming program. Then came what turned out to surprisingly be the main event. She showed me my sparkling new audiogram and explained how little residual low frequency hearing I actually had left. And she told me that it was borderline as far as being appropriate for an acoustic ear hook. For those new to this, an acoustic ear hook turns your cochlear implant processor, in my case an advanced bionics marble, into a hybrid device. If you have some leftover ability to naturally hear low frequencies after your implant surgery, an acoustic ear hook amplifies those low frequencies and sends them into a little speaker placed in your ear canal, like your basic hearing aid, while the high frequencies are delivered to you electronically via your implant. All of the three cochlear implant makers have a similar solution. Advanced Bionics is called an acoustic ear hook because, well, it's acoustic and it hooks on your ear. I don't know why they call it an acoustic ear hook. Anyway, she suggested that we go ahead and order one and we could try it out when I come back in April. And that's when I brightened up and I told her that AB included one in my kit and, hey, I happen to have it right here. So she attached it, replacing the T-mic, and hooked it up to the programming computer and went to town setting it up for my audiogram. And then I spoke to her, and wow, hearing my own voice, I was hearing low frequencies on the left side for the first time since my surgery. Then she had me stream some music into it, and again, wow, I was hearing stereo full-range sound. It was listenable. I was thrilled. Then I switched over to Spoken Word, an audio book I've been listening to. And again, wow, the narrator sounded pretty normal in the middle of my head. Here I was borderline eligible to even be able to use an acoustic ear hook, and yet the upgrade to my listening experience is overwhelming. It's not a minor upgrade, it's a whole new world. I left her off as a happy camper and enjoyed my book all the way home. When I got home, I checked out some music, both via speakers and also directly streaming into my devices. Before yesterday, music was pretty hopeless, a distorted cacophony of noise. I was trying to be patient, but was also getting discouraged, to tell the truth. It seemed like it was such a long ways off, but even that has changed overnight. Whereas music sounded horribly unlistenable, now it just sounds weird, but recognizable and even enjoyable. 
Then I decided to dig deep into what was happening. So I opened up my online tone generator and I routed it via Bluetooth directly to my devices. What I heard was astonishing. In my left ear, I could easily hear 20 hertz. That's about as low as a human can hear. And as I increased the frequency, I heard a steady upward sweep until I was a little beyond 12K. In my right ear, formerly known as my good ear, with the Link M Phonak, I started being able to hear at about 80 hertz, and it started dropping off pretty rapidly above 3K. So, in other words, my implanted ear, I can now hear from 20 hertz to 12,000 hertz. That's pretty amazing. But it's not all amazing. As I swept the frequency control upward, I could clearly hear as the sound crosses over from my acoustic ear hook to the electronic implant. With both ears active, I immediately hear the two sides diverge, the right side staying on pitch and the left side getting higher in pitch. So while I can hear from 20 hertz through 12,000 hertz on the left side, the pitch is way too high once I get to you know, around 400 hertz or so and on up. However, my brain seems to be taking the lower part that is heard with correct pitch and is mixing it with what my right ear is hearing and making it seem pretty correct and centered in my head. I really want to share my experience with anyone who's contemplating making use of residual hearing and with any audiologists who might look at an audiogram and think that there's so little residual hearing that it wouldn't be worth the effort to try and amplify it acoustically. This is something I noticed before even getting an implant. My left ear on its own, pretty useless. My right ear on its own, marginal. But put that useless ear and that marginal ear together and the result was definitely greater than the sum of its parts. Our brains are wired to hear binaurally, at least those of us with a history of decent hearing. For some reason, when those low frequencies are added to my implanted ear, everything immediately just clicked especially when using both ears together. Before yesterday, when I'd listened to my audiobook, the narrator sounded full range in my right ear, but without very good diction, since, you know, I can't really hear much above 2K in that ear. However, he was a robot on helium in my left ear, but with great diction. My brain took the S's and T's and P's and such from the left side and put them together with the full correct pitch but muddy voice from my right side and turned it into perfectly understandable speech. But it wasn't a unified thing in the middle of my head. It was a different version of the same thing in each ear that my brain turned into understandable speech. Certainly an improvement over not understanding speech at all, but pretty far removed from any conception of normal hearing. But with the low frequencies coming into my left ear, the same side as the helium robot, and then hearing the same on-pitch low frequencies in my right ear at the same time, game changer. I now hear a full range, unified, single voice in the middle of my head, where it's supposed to be. I can still hear the helium robot over there on the left, but my brain isn't confused about what it's supposed to be paying attention to anymore. I'm wondering, having correct pitch, lower frequencies, sharing brain real estate with the high digital frequencies now coming in, if my rehab and adaptation to those high pitches will be supercharged? I'll keep you posted. By the way, yesterday was the first day that I had no doubt that, for me anyway, the right choice was definitely advanced bionics. I'm pleased with my improvement in speech recognition. However, I suspect I'd probably feel the same way with implants from Cochlear Americas or Med-L. But I knew that streaming, hooking up to Zoom calls, listening to podcasts and stuff like that would be at least as much a part of my personal world of sound as visiting in person with friends or ordering an oat milk cappuccino at the bookstore. The ease of setting up my bimodal world, the combination of my Marvel processor and my Phonak hearing aid, can't be overstated. It was absolutely seamless and simple to set up with my iPhone, my laptop, and my Roger on mic. I changed programs with the remote app or a button on one of the devices, and the program changes on both devices. In an automatic program like AutoSense, both devices invisibly stay coordinated. I tap the volume button on either the hearing aid or the Marvel processor and it affects both devices. I can answer calls by tapping the top of either device and I can control the balance of the audio between the devices with the remote app. It all just works like it's supposed to. I was hoping that would be the case as a bimodal user if I chose Advanced Bionics. 
You might say I was banking on it, taking a leap of faith that it would all work as advertised and that I would have enough residual hearing in my left ear to benefit from an acoustic ear hook, instead of choosing med with their ability to stimulate lower frequencies deeper in the cochlea. That was the bet I made when I went with AB, and yesterday is the first time it became clear to me that it paid off. The main message that I want to leave with anyone hoping to make use of residual hearing and any audiologist wondering how much residual hearing is enough is this. If you're like me, it doesn't take much residual hearing to make a huge difference in how sound is perceived. Because, you know, brains are pretty amazing. I still have some more things that I want to try to refine, you know, get the balance right, work on the high-pitched things, some more stuff like that. I'm really already looking forward to my next mapping session in April. Until then, let me know if you have anything else you want to talk about or explore together. I wish you all well, and again, I thank you for listening.